Hey guys, it's Al. So the other day I was at Chapters, which is a Canadian bookstore, uh, book chain, um, and I picked up some classics and I just wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, I have been trying to read more classics um, just because I want to be more well, more well read. Um, and they're classics for a reason. Um, there's a reason that these books are so important in history and why they're considered classics. So I want to read more classics. I was at Chapters of the Day. Um, I think, I'm not sure because I'm kind of new to Canada, um, but I believe they, that these are just specific like Chapters editions of these books. Um, and Chapters has this really awesome thing where these books are often on sale. I think when I picked them up, it was like three books for $10. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. Um, the first book I'm going to talk about really fast uh, because it is not a classic, um, but I picked it up because I said in my July TBR I want to read more science nonfiction. I read a lot of history nonfiction, like biographies, uh, but I don't read a lot of science nonfiction, and Neil deGrasse Tyson is an author I want to read more of. Um, I recently read his book uh, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry uh, at the beginning of July, and so I wanted to pick up another book by him because uh, I really enjoyed it and it taught me a lot. Um, yeah, so this book is called Origins, Four Billion Years of Cosmic Evolution by Neil deGrasse Tyson and Donald Goldsmith. I'm not sure who Donald Goldsmith is, but I will look that up um, before I do a review of this book. Uh, just let you guys know, or maybe it'll say in here who Donald Goldsmith is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna read this really fast. Uh, the back of it, um, our true origins are not just human or even terrestrial, but in fact, cosmic. Drawing on recent scientific breakthroughs and the current cross-pollination among geology, biology, astrophysics, and cosmology, Origins explains the soul-stirring leaps in our understanding of the cosmos. From the first image of the galaxy birth, to Spirit Rover's exploration to Mars, to the discovery of water on one of Jupiter's moon, co-authors Neil deGrasse Tyson and Donald Goldsmith conduct a galvanizing tour of the cosmos with clarity and exuberance. Um, Donald Goldsmith, by the way, is an astronomy writer in Berkeley, California, and the author of more than 20 books. So who he is. I'll do a little more research before I do a review of this book. Um, but yeah, this isn't a classic, but I just wanted to include it because uh, I'm really excited to read it, and I picked it up at the same time. I picked up the classics. Yeah. The next book I'm going to be reading is, well, the next book I picked up, I probably won't read these in this order, um, but the next book I picked up is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. Um, I have read a couple of Ernest Hemingway's books. Actually, I've only read one of Ernest Hemingway's books, um, and it was The Sun Also Rises. I've read a lot of his short stories, though. I have a edition somewhere of his short stories, um, just a bunch of his short stories, because me and my fiance like to read the stories back and forth. Um, yeah, so A Farewell to Arms. Uh, in this classic exploration of love and war, Hemingway tells the story of Frederick Henry. The young lieutenant serves in the ambulance corps in Italy during World War I, where he fights to survive in a world of brutality and cynicism. In Hemingway's powerful masterpiece, he showcases the drama and unfaltering passion of love and the immense courage required when faced with the terror of loss. Um, I know Ernest Hemingway had a lot of like PTSD from the time he spent in the war, uh, so I know that this is going to be a lot of like first-hand accounts. Uh, not first-hand accounts. It's going to be a lot of him using his uh, first-hand experiences and translating it into a book. So I think that'll be really interesting. Uh, I will say I really like his short stories, but when I read his when I read his book, um, I was not as interested in it. I think a lot of his writing kind of, uh, at least in the short stories and in the one book that I read, it is a lot of everyday um, just like back and forth talking, um, which can be interesting, especially in the short stories, but I just didn't find it very interesting when I was reading the book. Um, but hopefully I will find this one interesting. I am this month, I'm going to be reading The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway, and hopefully I will like that one um, a little bit more than I like The Sun Also Rises. And yeah, I will get to this book as well at some point. Um, the next book I am going to be reading is Crime, or the next book I picked up, I keep saying the next book I'm going to be reading. The next book I picked up is Crime and Punishment by, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, I want to read more Russian literature. I have, I can't think of any Russian literature that I've read besides short stories um, that I read, because like I mentioned, me and my husband like to read short stories back and forth. Um, so yeah, this is Crime and Punishment. I will read the description. I am going to cut off the guy's name because I don't know how to pronounce that, so I'm just going to call him he. Um, this man is a handsome yet impoverished student 
Morally conflicted, he believes that extraordinary men who contribute much to society by their thinking are above the law. In order to prove his theory, he decides to murder a grasping old moneylender and through unforese unforeseen circumstances, her sister. Unexpectedly filled with remorse, he is caught in a, moral, in a moral dilemma. While he believes he can get away with a perfect murder, he also finds his conscience challenged by his developing relationship with the beautiful but deeply religious Sonia. Ah, uh, yeah, so this is a Russian literature novel. It was published in 1866. And I just, like I said, I just want to read more Russian literature. So I picked this one up. Um, yeah, I will put that there. The next book I'm going to be reading is... Ah, I keep saying that. The next book that I picked up is um, The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know what this is about uh, from the Disney movie, um, but I will read the back anyway. Um, three men fall in love with the beautiful street dancer Esmeralda, the handsome Captain Phoebus, the wicked Archdeacon, Archdeacon Frollo, and the hunchback ringer Quasim Quasimodo. As the romantic rivals compete for their beloved defection against the backdrop of the famous cathedral, a tale of villainous plots, dark passions, and heartfelt redemption unfolds. Um, this was published in 1831. Um, just told you what it was about. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the movie. Um, I, the movie is one of my favorite movies. Um, when I was younger, I really liked Esmeralda. Um, she's one of my favorite, like, Disney women. She's not a princess, but my favorite Disney woman uh, would be Esmeralda. Uh, yeah. I really like, I really like the movie. I want to read the book. Um, this is one that I'll probably be reading sooner rather than later because I find it really interesting. Um, I only recently found out that this was a book before it was a movie. I knew a lot of, uh, the fairy tales. I read a lot of the, like, short fairy tales that, uh, the Disney movies are based off of, like Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. Um, I've read those ones, but I did not know The Hunchback of Dom was a novel. Um, so I'm really excited to read this. Next book I'm going to be talking about is Emma by Jane Austen. Um, one of my favorite books of all time is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, my sister gave it to me when I was in high school and I read it and I just fell in love. Uh, but I've never read any of her other books. Uh, there is a YouTuber, uh, Murphy Napier. Um, she has a pretty big YouTube channel and she uh, did a couple of videos talking only about Jane Austen. And uh, she kind of ranked her different books. Um, I think Emma, if I remember, if I am remembering correctly, she recommended uh, because it was really funny, and I love reading old English um, books and like getting the humor in them. Because when I do that, I feel intelligent. Because I'm like, oh, this is written in old English, but I still get the humor. I'm so smart. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, I will read what it's about. Um, this comedy of manners, published in 1816, features Emma as an avowed spinster and matchmaker who is convinced that she knows best who should marry whom. Despite, and despite Austen's own doubts, the charming and infatuating hero, heroine is a favorite of many readers. Having almost ruined the prospects of Harriet Smith, her protege, and been, and been reprimanded by her good friend, George Knightley, Emma finally learns a little humility. She also comes up with some surprising conclusions about love and marriage. Uh, I believe Murphy said this was really funny, so I'm really excited to read this one. Um, I will probably save this for, if I ever, if we ever go on vacation again, I'll probably save this for a vacation because funny books are good, just to, like read on the beach, kind of light reading. Um, yeah. The next book I'm going to be talking about is The Scarlet Letter. Uh, I think this one will be pretty interesting. Um, I said about all these books, uh, but I am excited to read this one. Um, the, I'll read what it's about. The elderly husband of Hester Prime returns unexpectedly to their England village to find his wife nursing an illegitimate baby and wearing a scarlet letter A for adulteress embroidered on her dress. While her husband embarks on a vengeful hunt for the child's father, Hester refuses to name him because he holds a respected position in the Puritan community. In desperation, the lovers make a secret plan to flee to Europe with their young daughter, Hawthorne's story caused quite a stir when it appeared in 1850 and remains a milestone in American fiction. Uh, I am super excited to read this one. It's a pretty short one, so it will be a pretty quick, quick it'll be a pretty quick read. Um, yeah, it just shortens, I was going to say short and sweet, I guess it's not sweet, she has to wear an A because she has another man's baby. Um, but it is a short book 
uh, that I think will be an easy read that I can read in one afternoon um, and just get a classic into my head. I don't know. I picked it up. I know some people read it, have read it for school. I bet a lot of people read all these books for school, but none of these books I've had to read for school, obviously, because I haven't read any of them. Um, yeah. The next book in the last book is The Side of Paradise. This is by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, I always review what it's about. Uh, Emory Blaine, a wealthy Midwestern boy, set on rejecting his upbringing, turns his ambitions to the elite society of the East Coast. But Blaine's progress through a se sequence of romantic attachments, the life he longs for, continues to elude him. Uh, this is supposedly Fitzgerald's debut novel. Uh, so this is the first novel he wrote. Um, I've read uh, The Beautiful and the Damned, and I really liked that one. And uh, like Ernest Hemingway, I also have a collection of his short stories um, bound up that me and my husband like to read together. Um, so I am really excited to read this one. I love F. Scott Fitzgerald's writing. It's flowery, and I just like it. And I love reading about like these high-class like 1920s, 1930s, 1940s lifestyle um, that he often writes about. Um, yeah, it's also not too long. I think it's only it's a little over 200 pages. Um, so that'll be a short read. Uh, yeah, that is, oof, that is the last book. It is not going to stand up. Well, there we go. That is the last book that I picked up. I'm hoping that maybe one of these months I can do a uh, kind of a classics month. Usually when I read for a month, I read like four or five fantasy, uh, and then one classic, and then one or two nonfiction. I'm hoping one of these months that I can do five classics, one nonfiction, and one fantasy, just to kind of smash some of these down. A lot of these are kind of short, like uh, under 300 pages, so I don't think that would be too hard. Uh, so yeah, we will see. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye!